Hi everyone, welcome to the first real entry into my devlog where today I will show you how I will be going about designing the stealth challenges in my conceptual game and level. First, I'll go over the revised game design document and then I'll show you guys some examples of how I'm looking to design these stealth challenges in my level. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Now, we're in the game design document. The setting uh, is still the same. It's a modern hotel, but uh, I've moved it from being inside a city to a highly elevated mountain valley, somewhat similar to uh, what the picture in the bottom right is displaying. The hotel also now has a clear inspiration, um, not just a Paris style hotel, but like in the style of the Hotel de Crillon, which you can see on the top image. And the level would start by uh, the player landing in the forest that's around the hotel and then sneaking their way towards the hotel and then get into the hotel. So that's where it's all set. Now the premise is still the same, but I changed some game elements. So the unlockable doors still exist, but instead of buttons now, uh, we just have key cards because I feel like key cards work a lot better. It's just you, you pick it up and now you can open this kind of door instead of just having a button to press and then the player has to remember which door opens now with which button. So now you can just have, uh, you can just pick up a key card and then a specific security level of doors. So maybe like two or three doors can now be opened with these key cards. Now the grappling hook has been completely removed uh, because I feel like it was a very weird element to have in there. Maybe I'll bring it back in as like a kind of movement element. Um, I think that could be a cool idea, but the light switches don't exist anymore. I feel like they were a very weird and not very intuitive uh, inclusion in the game. So instead I have an EMP now. Now the EMP, uh, you press a button and it turns off all the cameras in a 700 unit radius for five seconds. Uh, this is measured in Unreal Engine 5 units, so it's 700 units in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, it has a limited number of charges, so at the moment three, and these can be refilled by picking up batteries. Um, and a battery pickup instantly sets the charges to max charges no matter how many you have. So if you have two, it goes to three. If you have zero, it also goes to three. Now, distractions. These are a new mechanic that I want to introduce. So you just throw an object to distract a guard or an employee, and the enemy will go to pick up the object. And once they has picked up, uh, they look around for a second or two, and then they resume their normal patrol behavior. Uh, distractions do not work when the enemy has seen you, so if they are like chasing you. And there is also no maximum amount of distractions that the pl player can carry at once. So a distraction item can really be anything. Um, I'm looking to have like different items in different parts of the hotel uh, themed as to like what would be there. So let's say in the spa you could pick up a bottle of shampoo and that could be a distraction item. In the kitchen, you could pick up a spoon and that could be a distraction item, like stuff like that. So they would all work the exact same way. There's no difference between those items. It's just how they're represented visually. Another new mechanic are hiding cabinets. Um, these can also be represented differently in different parts of the hotel. For example, in sleeping rooms, they would just be wardrobes. In a kitchen, maybe they would be represented as, I don't know, the freezer, something like that. But these are inspired by Hitman. Uh, they have these as well. Um, so the player can enter this hiding spot um, and the guards will not be able to spot or catch them in there. I just want to have it be clear cut, not like a confusing like, oh, if you go in right before them, they can still see you or they can still grab you out of it. And then it's unclear how they saw you or no, I just want it to be that if you're inside there, you cannot be caught and you cannot be spotted. So I aim to use those to help players uh, either like hide from guards once they have been spotted and they're being chased or to uh, avoid being seen altogether when a guard is on their patrol pattern. 
Now, for the enemies, the guards still work exactly the same. Um, just with a small difference that once the player has been spotted, it's not an instant loss because I feel like it's super punishing to do that. And also in, um, in games like Hitman or Metal Gear, the fun part comes not from, you know, not being spotted, but it comes from when you are spotted, you don't instantly lose, but you're still like, it's harder for you now. You have to run away, and then the guards are in uh, an, a kind of caution or alert loop for a few seconds, and then they resume their normal behavior. If the player gets spotted by the guard, they will activate this alert or chasing loop, and the guards will start chasing the player until they have caught them or lost track of them. Uh, if the player passes other guards while running, these guards will enter the alert loop as well and start chasing the player as well. So this will encourage the player to still like try and keep away from other guards while being chased so that they create as little uproar as possible uh, to get to their hiding spot where they want to escape from the, from the guards chasing them. If the player manages to escape the guards uh, view for three seconds, the guards will go back or will first have a sort of caution loop. So they will uh, scout the place that they last saw the player for like 10, 15 seconds, and then they will resume their normal patrol behavior. Now, employees, these are what I previously called humans, um, which was just every human in general back then. But now I think, I think it makes a lot more sense if it's just the employees being able to catch the uh, player. So the way I thought about this in terms of a lore standpoint is that the hotel is a very high security and very noble hotel. Basically, every one of the employees and the guards know who is allowed in the hotel and who isn't. And if they see your face, they know you aren't allowed in the hotel. And then they will, you know, chase you. Now, with the employees, they work the same as the so-called humans in the previous version. And then the cameras, the crouching cover, and the controls are still... Uh, the same as previously. So now we will get to the part where I show you some examples of how I intend to present these stealth challenges. So here I would have an example of how I would like to frame a problem uh, in a stealth game and also how to guide the player towards a problem. Now we're going to be taking a look at this clip from Hitman, um, also a three uh, third person stealth game. Now, I'm looking around here, and here I see the two guards. Now, first of all, let's look at this frame. Now, what I really liked is this edge right here, this box, how it's angled a little bit in comparison to everything else. Now, here, here you see it perfectly, how it kind of angles in, in a different angle than, than this. So it kind of in, in invites the player uh, there. This is the kind of thing that I really love to do, is, is this geometry placement. And I've kind of done this already in my first version of the map. It invites the player in, and this, this entire frame, really, here, tells you everything that you need to know uh, for this challenge right here. So what you have is uh, two enemies, and you have some cover. And this is all it, all that this challenge wants to tell you is there is a challenge, or all that this frame wants to tell you is that there is a challenge ahead. There is um, danger ahead in the sense of like, well, your goal in a stealth game is to remain undetected, or usually it's to remain unseen. In this game, it specifically means that you want to stay undetected, and the the red circles, the enemies represent a threat to this goal that you have. And the cover in here um, gives you really a perfect uh, location to scout out the situation from a very safe position, even if it doesn't feel like you are safe, because, well, I don't know if you can see it down here in the bottom left, um, but uh, 
well, you're, tresp you're trespassing. So every single enemy in this area will immediately detect you and or threaten your goal from remaining undetected. So basically in this frame, you can see it perfectly. I'm using the cover that was provided to me kindly by the level designers to scout out the situation. I looked to the left, uh, saw if I was safe and if I was like good to scout the situation. I form a plan here, I try to distract them, but then uh, a new information was given to me uh, and it's, uh, it's these stairs here. And so I'm gonna go up the, the stairs now because well, it seems like the better path than to try and go past these two guards. So first I scout into this building. Uh, Hitman has this kind of spidey sense. So you can see all the guards uh, that can spot you right away. Those are the ones with the uh, white dots above them, the white circles above them. They can detect you. And so they are a threat to you. And with that spidey sense that you can press at all, that you can activate at all times uh, when you hold the control button, you can scout out those enemies through walls even. And that means that they don't have to put as much of an emphasis on these like, uh, on this like specific framing, um, but they still do it. And I still wanted to, to show how uh, I as the player can take advantage of how they carefully placed and framed their challenges. Now I climb through the window. This one was a bit risky, but once again, here we actually have a lot of cover. So here we have uh, a, a situation where the player is extremely close or forced to be extremely close to the enemies. You know, the enemies being right now here and here uh, behind the pillar, he's looking out the window. So the one enemy is looking into this direction and this one is just getting up to do their patrol path. And the player now has a lot of options to hide behind. They have this uh, little uh, plank right here. They have this stack of planks right here. Um, they could even go further back. There was some cover behind here as well. So a lot of options to make the player still feel very safe, even if they were to have entered from the door uh, previously, right when you came up the stairs. This, I think, is the perfect frame to demonstrate this entire thinking. The cover right here, and then the enemies here and here. I am in a position where I, where I will never be detected, and I can look at these for as long as possible. I can look at their behavior. I can study their behavior for an hour if I wanted to, and then learn exactly how they move. It's, I'm never going to be detected, and this is the stealth challenge that's being framed. Is like, how do I get past these enemies? I can get all the information I want, and then go with whatever plan I want to. And so this is, I think, the best frame of reference to inspire uh, my design thinking in um, how I want to frame and place and present these stealth challenges for the player. Because now the player sees the overall challenge, which is, you know, these two guards. And then I, as the player, can make small goals. For example, throw a distraction here, wait till one of the guard comes here, then take them down. And then I can wait till the other guard stands here and looks out the window again, and then I can take them down. And then I have this whole area to myself to then scout on the people below me, which you can see here, there are some people below me who also have a patrol pattern. So I can use this whole area uh, to scout on the people below me to, to get past a bigger goal, uh, which would be to eliminate, like, to, to complete one of my objectives here. Maybe one of my targets is down there and I want to eliminate them and I want to study their behavior. Well, I can then do that from up here. And so it's this really small stealth challenge that later devolves into all these small goals just because I framed it like this. And for every player, these goals will be different and that's the fun of it. That's what makes uh, a stealth game or a stealth challenge fun is sitting here in this spot and coming up with this plan while you're playing, you know? Now, another example in the same level is uh, this one. Here we have a story mission, which are in Hitman are optional 
missions that kind of break down into small little goals that you can see up here that you can do to um, get a perfect opportunity to uh, complete one of your objectives, get access to uh, a difficult to reach area um, or like get a unique way of killing a target. Well, so I'm doing one of those right now. I turned on the, uh, the UI markers just to facilitate uh, this example uh, to, to be able to explain it a lot easier. So I come by here. I almost get spotted because, you know, I don't take precaution. I don't play a stealth game like a stealth game here. So again, cover and then the threat. Now in this, in this uh, instance, I'm not trespassing. As you can see, I'm not trespassing down here. So not every single guard will spot me. Here, the only danger is him. And he's the biggest danger because, well, my objective is grabbing something from right here. And so now I'm scouting out. I'm, I can safely scout from here. There is no guard in the area, as you can see on the minimap. Uh, the guards that can spot me are marked as white. The, all the other ones are marked as black. I can see, okay, there is no other guard in the area that can spot me. It's only him, so I can safely study his behavior and see how I can get there. Now let's see the plan I come up with. Now using the spidey sense and seeing the cable, I can see, okay, there's a cable running here. I can see the floodlights. Almost walk into him again. And now I see the exact I see the exact plan that I want to do. Use this generator to distract him, have him come here, go past him, sneak past him, grab the nitroglycerin and get the hell out of there before he comes back. And all of that, that entire plan just comes from this framing right here. And there's the plan in action. pick up the nitroglycerin. Now, after I got the nit nitroglycerin, I'm walking towards the next mission objective. Come into this area and, well, look at this. Another challenge. And say it with me. Cover. Enemy. objective and distraction. What I'm going to do from this exact frame, just this one frame, I can see everything that I need to do and I'm going to do this plan. Turn on the distraction, have him come over here, climb over here, put the nitroglycerin in there and then get the hell out of there. Turn on the distraction. Now he's going over there. And I can safely complete the mission story. Now after having shown you guys this, I want to show you with an example of a different game, uh, Dishonored 2, a different design problem I had with the first version of the map. So see you guys in that one. So here's an example from Dishonored 2. I just quickly want to go over how many guards are here and how the challenge is presented once again. So we see, again, we are in a safe position right now and we can see all that is going to be part of our challenge. We see the one, two, three, four guards that are going to be the, our problem in this general area, which we, are, which we have to traverse. We see the mission marker up here. I know it's hidden in this frame, but you'll see it in... Uh, when I when I play the video again. So we see the mission marker, we see, okay, the paths all converging towards this direction. There we go. And we see the light coming from here, meaning, okay, this is where we have to go. So we have to cross uh, from here to get over there. We can, in this position, safely see all the guards that are here and everything that is going to be problematic in this entire area. 
So we see the entire challenge presented in this frame. And what I mainly want to draw attention to is how many guards there are here. This area is pretty big. You know, it has uh, another area up here uh, where you can get past. It has an entire court down here. If we see how big this area is, how much cover we have around here. So here's cover. This entire area is covered um, here cover as well. Uh, lots of cover over on this side, so we're going to probably sneak past this side, but I want to draw your attention to how many guards we have here. Only four. Only four guards. Now, if we look at an example from my first version of this map uh, with an area that is like a little bit bigger, but generally still almost the same size, uh, we can see that there are a lot more guards in this area. If we just count the guards, not even the employees or humans as they were called in that version, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different guards in this area. And we haven't even counted all of these. But still, this entire area has nine guards and is about the same size and supposed to be also not that different in difficulty. Like, sure, this area is meant to be a little more difficult than the one we saw in Dishonored, but still, you see how many more guards there are here than there are in the Dishonored example. Is this necessarily a bad thing? I think in this example it is because it is way too much information for the player to keep track of or to try and keep track of. And as you can see, on this paper map, how many areas do you see where the player is truly safe? There is this one where the player is truly safe. Well, maybe here in between, right? And uh, around here. <clears throat> then also around here and again around here, but only if they crouch. And other than that, the player is really just, well, screwed in this entire area. Like everywhere they can be spotted from, from one guard or more. So with this little amount of hiding places and this many guards, simply reducing the amount of guards would increase the amount of hiding places and would allow the player to gather more information. And also they would have to gather less information so they can really get into the mindset of uh, becoming the predator, the one to outsmart uh, the guards and the security system. So if I were to rework this example, I would, for example, uh, remove this guard. So we would, re we would remove four guards, have five in this general area. I think that would be fine. Maybe also we would remove these uh, employees uh, and probably also this employee. And now we have a stealth challenge that is a lot fairer towards the player because one, they have more spots where they can hide and gather information from. So now these are just the additional ones that we have created just by removing some guards, not even changing any geometry. And I feel like this gives the player much more of a fair challenge than it was previously. So this like frame and gather information thinking, as well as giving the player a little more space to do this hiding and information gathering, is mainly what I'm going to be looking at when I'm reworking this level. In the next video, uh, I'm going to show you guys the new hotel layout uh, that will hopefully be done by then. So stay tuned for that. And if you don't want to miss any part of this series, make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.